It's Saturday morning. I hope you had a great week and a good Friday night. And now it's Saturday. Uh, have you put together uh, your long list of things and projects to do around the house? Or maybe uh, you're going to just catch up and and uh, sleep in and you're going to be joining me. Hey, Hans, uh, sleep in and uh, watch this later today. Uh, either way, I hope you have a great, great, great Saturday. Looking forward to seeing everybody. Uh, hey, Mary and Kenna. Um, and Debbie, um, hope you know, everybody had a good week and it's Saturday and you've got your list of all the different projects, uh, Aaron, uh, around the house, or maybe you're going to uh, do some shopping, uh, a little bit rainy outside. If you haven't been outside yet, a little rainy. Hey, Jean and Ashley. Uh, so, uh, it might be a rain, uh, uh, a cold rainy run, uh, for me here in a little bit, but we'll, we'll see. Hey, Betty and Sherry. Um, good to have everybody. Glenn, good morning. It is Zinni. It is Saturday. Uh, looking forward to gathering with everybody tomorrow at Church of Hope, uh, 9 or 10.30 a.m. in person. Uh, hey, John Alvarez, good morning. Uh, got a big football game tomorrow. Uh, Tampa Bay against uh, the Green Bay Packers. For us here in Florida, cheering on our Tampa Bay Bucks, right? And uh, if they can go to the Super Bowl, the Super Bowl is in Tampa. Uh, so, we're going for that. Hey, Sparky and Dana, Carmen, Melissa. Uh, so good to have everybody gathered together uh, on this Saturday morning. Have a cup of coffee. And uh, hey, Tammy. Um, good morning. Good morning, Carmen. Everybody uh, joining in together. Kimberly and Lori. Um, all right. So, uh, you know, um, it's hard to believe. Uh, of our 21 days, we are finishing today our second week. Uh, Kimberly, of our uh, 21 days of prayer. Now, today we're in Romans chapter 12, and I'll be reading from verse 13. We are reading the entire chapter of Romans each and every day. We're building deep uh, into um, our lives by pulling in God's word. And then also uh, today we are praying for the Hope Kids Dream Team. Uh, right? Uh, always excited. Um, no matter what age you are, uh, you know, part of our calling is to lift up the next generation. Uh, there's always a generation coming behind us. And the greatest legacy, hey, Daniel, the greatest legacy for any of us is how do we prepare the generation coming behind us, raising them up uh, to be, you know, deeply rooted uh, in their faith in Jesus Christ, to stand tall on the scriptures and to be bold in the culture in leading people to Jesus. So I'm excited uh, about what God's doing at uh, Church of Hope uh, with uh, Hope Kids, uh, the Dream Teamers, all the people who lean in and are raising up this generation. And so we're going to be reading uh, from Psalms 32 and 8, Psalms 32 and 8 uh, here in just a little bit. Okay, um, but notice what it says in Romans chapter 12 and verse 13. It says this, share with God's people who are in need, practice hospitality. Share with God's people who are in need, practice hospitality. Uh, years ago, a group of people here in Ocala, and, uh, hey Joe, good to see you this morning. Um, and, and John, John Alvarez, you know this, you were a part of that group, uh, saw that there were a group of, of, of people in our community who, who needed help. Uh, single moms and their children uh, living in their cars. Uh, for whatever reason, uh, there was no family for them to go back to. Uh, living in some of these roach motels here in our town. So the dream for Project Hope uh, was formed. And, and Project Hope had a statement, and it went something like this. Uh, we're not giving a hand out. We're giving a hand up. Boy, I like that. Uh, I don't know exactly who coined that, if it was John or someone else. But the idea was we weren't just trying to give a hand out. We wanted to lean in uh, to these ladies' life and give them a hand up. And that's exactly what Romans chapter 12, verse 13 is saying. It's saying, listen. Share with God's people who are in need. That doesn't mean just give them a handout, right? Because if, if you just give a handout today, what's going to be their source of help tomorrow or next month? The same bills that are due this month will be due the next month. The same discouragement. Uh, hey, Donna. Hey, Brittany. 
Linda, the, the, the same broken marriage this month, next month, at some point there's got to be a plan so that next month will look different than this month. And that's what we do. When, when, you, when you practice hospitality, you are helping people become who God created them to be. It's not just giving them a handout. It's giving them a hand up, right? The idea of hospitality, right? You often think about your home and inviting somebody into your home. Uh, Linda's niece uh, and her family uh, were, were coming through and, uh, this week and, and stayed at our house. And so Linda made up, you know, the bedrooms on that side of the house. And as only Linda can do, right, she made a beautiful dinner one night and an awesome breakfast. Uh, their little girl, Sophia, it was her birthday. And so Linda put, you know, a birthday cupcakes together. You would say, well, that's practicing hospitality. Well, well I, maybe on one hand, on a temporary hand. But what we were really doing is believing in <clears throat> Ashley. Believing in El, believing in Junior, believing in Sophia, we were trying to build into them. Kate, Evelyn, we're trying to build. Hey, Michael, we're trying to build into them to actually prepare them for when they were going to be leaving our house. That's what Paul's talking about. We get to every single day build into people's lives, and the idea is how are we leaving them better than we found them. That, that's hospitality. It's because I'm in someone's life, their sense of trust in God grew to a whole nother level. Their sense of, of being loved and wanted grew to a whole nother level. Then their sense of being who God created them to be has grown to a whole nother level. Do you see, that's, that's what he's saying. We get to do this. And in a moment when we pray, Hands up, right? I trust you, God. Hands open, I'm free in Christ. And then those hands forward, those hands forward representing, I get to see people around me today. I get to make a difference. And that's what we do in the next gen ministry. Hear me on this. We, we have no babysitting ministry. Even all the way down into our nursery department at, at Church of Hope. We're telling those girls and those little boys as we're rocking them, as we're caring for them, Jesus loves you. If nothing else, uh, from birth uh, to they go into the, to the toddler department, they're going to hear over and over and over and over and over. What's up, Evan? Big dog. Good to see you, my man. Um, we're telling those little kids that Jesus loves them. We have a scope and a sequence. In other words, we have a scope of God's word that we are building into our next gen. From the moment a baby is born, a part of our, our church, to the time they graduate from high school. We've got a scope and sequentially we're gonna unpack uh, along the way. Hey, Renee and Ed, and we're gonna unpack it. Because what we want is when a young person graduates, there are some things we think are important. Number one is that they don't just know about God, they know God personally. And there's a big difference. Uh, a lot of students will graduate from high school and they'll know about an athlete. They'll know about a, a pop star. They'll know about an actor or an actress, but they don't know them personally. One reason many young people leave your home, um, leave um, a church, is because they for 18 years knew about God, but they never knew him personally. So we're gonna lead them. That's what our next gen is doing. They're leading them to know about God. We're also gonna lead them to know that they can have, they can have incredible freedom in Christ like how tall they are, the color of their skin, uh, academically, athletically, all the things that students often get measured by, right? Uh, the, the things, which lunch table you're sitting at, uh, all those pressure points, peer pressure, we want them to know because of Jesus Christ, they are free, baby, they are free. It, it, let me tell you something, if, if, if more students felt free in Christ, they would feel more empowered to tell that person who's trying to take advantage of them on homecoming and prom? Uh, no, I don't think so. No, no, no. I'm saving my purity uh, for my wedding night. And so that's important to us. We believe in, I believe in the next generation. I, I might be 55 and, and my daughters obviously are in their late 20s, but I love every student. Because here's what I know, is a fourth grader only gets to be a fourth grader once. There's no do-over. And soon enough, they'll be in the adult life. 
And that's why we make next gen a priority. And that's why it's so passionate for me to help moms and dads to see how dangerous of a mistake it is to miss out in developing their sons and daughters during those elementary years. I get it. You're under a lot of pressure, all your friends, travel ball, and all the, you know, the temporary accolades of all that success. I do believe there can be an and also. I don't think it's an either or, but I think letting your boys and letting your girls know that Jesus is the center of your life. Jesus is the point of your life. I think it's real important. It's really, 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 it, it's, the, it's the difference between life and death. Statistically, like 90% of the people in the United States are making decisions for Jesus before the age of 18. That tells you something, right? That's why we're praying for next gen this morning. That's why we're, we're loving our students. That's why we have a scope and a sequence and, and we're so focused on this. So we want our young people not to just know about God. We want them to know God personally. We want them to be free in Christ, not what someone's saying about them on social media. And then I, I, I want every one of our students to know that they've been created by God for a purpose. They're not an accident. They're not some Friday night moment in a pizza and a bottle of wine and oops, oh, now we got Junior around. No, not, not, not at all. God says that they are fearfully and wonderfully made. And I want our students graduating knowing they can go make a difference. They can change the world. I was so impressed uh, by Amanda Gorman and her poem uh, at the uh, inaugural of the 46th president of the United States on Wednesday, a 22 year old. I'll guarantee you somewhere along the line, somebody's been building into that young lady's life. Somebody's been casting vision. Somebody's been lifting her up. Somebody's been helping her know that she's free and she doesn't have to be worried about her peers. Someone's been telling her that, hey, listen, you have been created and designed on purpose for purpose and you can make a difference. And oh, did she make a difference. Boy, did she make a difference on Sunday or on, on Wednesday. So that's, man, we're building in, building in, building into our students. So here's, here's what uh, the, the word says uh, in, we're on day, day 13, January uh, 23rd, right? Um, and we're reading Psalms, Psalms 32 uh, and 8. And here's what God's word says. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you and watch over you. That's what we want to do. We, we want our, our children to be instructed in the way to go. Have you heard that statement? It's better to prepare boys and girls than to repair boys and girls. Did you catch that? That's one of our, that's one of our philosophies. It's better to prepare boys and girls than to repair boys and girls. It's better to prepare them. I would rather prepare them to know how to resist the temptations, how to trust God in any situation, how to love, prepare people, how to love people when they're not very loving, right? I prepare, people, prepare young people how to invest their lives. It's always better to prepare students than to repair students. And that's what the psalmist is saying. Did you hear it? The psalmist says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. You should go. That, that, that's the key. Teaching them, guiding them in the way that they should go. I will counsel you and watch over you. So we're going to be praying uh, for all of them today. Okay. Um, hey, uh, if you're in Central Florida, love for you to join me tomorrow, Church of Hope. Uh, 9 or 10.30 a.m. in person, uh, safe environment. Uh, we, we, we're all fighting this coronavirus. We're gonna keep praying. We're gonna finish strong. And, uh, but we've, we've gotta be diligent. We've gotta be aware. We can't let our guard down. So practicing social distancing, we can be careful and faithful at the, at the same time. And I, and I still say, uh, at least in Central Florida, uh, God has been very gracious. Uh, the outbreaks... Um, it don't happen uh, in churches. Uh, and so I think it's one of the best place uh, to, to be on a Sunday morning. But if you can't, or you're not comfortable with that, then we gather online and uh, we'll connect together online, right? It is an and also, in person and online. But you know this to be true, right? Nothing can ever replace the in-person 
I'm glad we're together here and I can call out a name every once in a while, Donna and 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 Annette, right? And, but we're not face to face. That's how we were designed to be. I understand for a season we've got to be careful. Uh, I, I've got a, a meeting today. I get I get to hang out uh, with Jamie Gilmore. Cut difference. Um, we're really going to be strategizing how to get in more of our schools and um, lean into this space of building into minority boys. Cut different. If you're not familiar with Cut Different, it's one of our partners. They're on Facebook. Cut is spelled with a K. Cut different. But uh, Jamie's dad's going to join us today, and he's a pastor. Um, so Jamie Gilmore Sr. So I get to have uh, some time with those guys. And so, I mean, uh, we're going to have breakfast together, and uh, we're going to, I'm going to social distance. And I'm not going to eat at a restaurant. I'm going to eat in the Hope Cafe and set up the tables. And right, what am I saying? I'm saying we don't have to be afraid. I'm saying we can still be together. It just takes a couple extra steps to be wise, right? Makes sense. I know, I knew it would. So if you could join me uh, here uh, at um, at Hope tomorrow, 9 or 10.30 a.m. I've got, a, I think, a message to encourage all of us, okay? And then um, a little bit of a selfish prayer on Monday at 12.30, I am hope I am hosting a symposium uh, with university students. Uh, it's gonna be online, a Zoom call, but um, I've submitted 10 questions about the culture um, and um, how they see the culture. And uh, there'll be a moderator and they'll be asking me these questions and we're gonna have a dialogue. And really the, the, the purpose of it is, I really wanna see what you know, 19 to 24 year olds are thinking. Um, um, I, I know how I think. Uh, I know people around me, but I wanna know how they think. How are they seeing the world? How are they seeing these cultural events? You see, when you take the time to get to know who somebody is, um, the opportunity for connecting with people goes to a whole nother level. And that's the key. The key in life is connecting. Everybody communicates. Social media, the news, preachers, wah, 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 wah. The key is, are we connecting? Because when you connect, anything is possible. When two human beings connect together, Anything is possible. But we got a whole bunch of bouncing off each other right now, right? Everybody throwing their facts and their data and quoting this science as compared to that scientist and their political ideas and that political idea. And it just, and that's why nothing happens, right? Okay, y'all. Melissa, that's a good word. Um, openness uh, is good. Okay, um, I'm going to pray. God, I love you. Man, do I love you. It's a Saturday morning and most of us don't have to go to work today and so we're thankful for this day off. I lift my hands up, God, and I declare that you are the great, true, and living God. You are over us. You are greater than us and your ways are higher than our ways. We don't have to stress or be anxious today because you are in control. Our hands are open. We are free in you, Jesus. And I pray over our students. It's so easy. And God, not just students, but all of us. That old peer pressure thing. What people say about us online. What a boss or a spouse or a neighbor. Uh, when we look in the mirror and how we see ourselves and we compare ourselves to other people, it's so easy, God, to be all bound up and locked up in the perception of other people. But Jesus Christ, because you came back from the grave, because you came back to life, our hands are open and we are free, free, free in Jesus' name. And our hands are forward. Remind us, God, that students, and God, I don't always understand it, because it seems like children and, and grandchildren inside of our homes are loved and cherished. So many grandparents are rock stars, but when it comes to the children in the church, sometimes people are really hesitant to invest their lives. I ask God that you raise up a, a brand new generation of dream teamers, that you put on your heart for a great season of mentoring. I ask over Jamie Gilmore that the cut difference would be able to mentor these minority boys and you give us entrance into all of the different schools. God, watch over today's meeting with Jamie and, and, and Pastor Gilmore and myself. 
continue to build a partnership uh, that's going to make a difference in Ocala, Marion County, and around the world. God, I'm thankful for all of the Dream Teamers who uh, come early on Sundays, and they work in our preschool Hope Kids, and in elementary Hope Kids, and middle school, and in, in high school. And God, will you use these Dream Teamers? And God, not in, in, in a way that the only explanation is, is look, look what you, God, are doing through them. God, um, we, we pray over this team, and the 1440 Students Dream Team. God, Mary, Marion County Superintendent, uh, Dr. Gullet, and all of our local schools and teachers and, and workers as they lead and invest in this next generation. I mean, in your word, God, you said, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you and watch over you. God, help us to, 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 to shape and to build into young people's life. Help us, God, to prepare them rather than all the time to repair them. So many of us as adults, God, are in a season of being repaired in our 30s, in our 40s, in our 50s. Something happened when we were young and we didn't deal with it. We brushed it under the carpet. We ignored it. We've stuffed it way down. God, be gracious and merciful to this generation that nothing will be stuffed down. And they will find hope and freedom that they will graduate from high school and know you personally. They'll have freedom in you, Christ. That, that they will know that they have been designed on purpose. They have been, been created by an almighty God for a purpose. And they will step out into this world and make a difference. God, I don't know the spiritual background. I don't know the family background of, of Amanda who gave that poem at the inaugural this week. I pray over her. I, I ask God that um, if she doesn't know you personally, that she would. Uh, her influence over the generations, God, is, is gonna be significant. The, the skills that you've given to her. Uh, God, I pray for her family, parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles and mentors. And, and God, you would use them to help shape that voice, her voice, uh, to point people to the truth. And that truth is rooted in you. God, remind us that you say that we should always share with people who are in need, that we should practice hospitality. May it be said today that the people we come in contact with, we've helped lift them up. God, help us to see beyond just giving a handout. People don't need a handout. They need a hand up. They need to leave our presence believing that all things are possible. I sure do love you. Your hand of favor over all today. God, may they walk in your good pleasure. May they experience your promises. May they be ever aware of your presence. And God, may they be, may we be the kind of people that share the provision of your grace and your mercy with people all around us so they would discover that there is hope in your son, Jesus. I sure do love you. We pray exclusively in that name, the name given under heaven whereby we must be saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. Hey, everybody, have a great rest of this day. Love you, can't wait. See you tomorrow, Church of Hope. 9 or 10.30 a.m. Remember, on Sundays, we do our prayer time inside of our service at 9 and 10.30 a.m. So at 7 o'clock, we're not in this space. You can join us at Church of Hope. If you're outside, uh, join us at Church of Hope at 9 or 10.30 a.m., which actually is just joining us in the same space right here at Facebook. It'll look a little bit different, but the same concept. You'll get uh, some music and uh, a really good experience. Okay, peace.